Hey guys, this is Henry from Obedia. Today we're going to be talking about the new features included in Ableton Live 10.1. I'm going to be showing uh, eight of them, the eight new features that I believe, or the eight most important new features that I believe were included in Ableton Live 10.1. There's other features that you can um, study from their website if you want to, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be working on eight of those. So the first one, um, it's regarding the wavetable instrument. If we go ahead and search from the Ableton Instruments list, there's one called wavetable, right? I'm going to go ahead and import um, or add with the wavetable instrument to my Ableton Live set. Now I'll go ahead and add add it with a a preset that I like. It's called flux, Oops. flux capacitor. I'm sorry. So click and drag it, and there it is. So, uh, what's the new feature regarding wavetable? It's the fact that um, if you go to the actual controls of the wavetable instrument, uh, and you click here where it says collection, now there's an option that says user. That means that the user can now drop their own samples here to be processed by the wavetable instrument. So um, as you can see, now that it's set to user, uh, this is empty. So if I go to my samples list, I can select any sample, click and drag it, and now if I press a key, I should be able to listen to the wavetable instrument. <laughs> There it is. So you can basically add any sample you want. It'll be processed by the instrument and you'll be able to listen to the sound that comes out of it. So let's go to our second new feature. And that's uh, one of the audio effects that's been added. If we go to the audio effects uh, list and we search for channel EQ, we can click and drag it to the same track that we had. And there it is. It's our new equalizer. Uh, the difference between this equalizer and the other equalizer, uh, well, the EQ8 and the EQ3, it's the fact that the channel EQ, even though it has three bands, um, just like EQ3, it also has a high pass filter at 80 hertz, uh, and the mid band you can sweep, okay? Uh, and it also has an output knob. This channel EQ, or quote-unquote channel EQ, tries to resemble a uh, the typical equalizer that you would find on a, mic, uh, a DJ mixer, okay? Uh, the low band can go all the way from minus 15 to plus 15, the mid band minus 12 to plus 12, and the high band minus 15 up to plus 15. So yes, um, the channel EQ tries to resemble a the the typical equalizer that you would find on a DJ mixer. What else? Uh, let's go to our third feature, and that's another audio effect. It's it's the delay audio effect. Um, we we could go to our audio effects list, and here's our delay. I could click and drag it, but I actually I can find it on my delay return track if I click on it. There's my delay right there. Uh, there's two delay lines, one for left and one for right channel. They could be either synced to a node value, and that node value is obviously depending on the tempo or the BPMs. Right now it's set to 111, 111. But you could also click where it says sync and it'll switch to time. So you could basically type a certain amount of milliseconds and it'll delay the signal based upon those numbers. You also have a feedback control. You have your um, bandpass filter. You have your modulation controls like rate, filter, and time. And then you can select between four different modes which are repitch, fade, jump, and ping pong. There's your dry wet knob. In this case, we're opening the delay from the return track. So yes, the dry wet knob is going to be all the way wet. But if we wanted to add it to our individual track, let's say our wavetable track, you could click and drag it. You would tweak it, and then you would use your dry wet knob to taste. 
I advise you, however, to use it as a return. I, I mean, to use it in a return track. What else? Um, so our fourth new feature, it's regarding automation. I uh, just switched to my arrangement view. And here's what I'm going to do. Sorry, I need to enable these two tracks. Okay, back to arrangement. Um, here I have a loop track and a kick track. As you can see, um, I can go ahead and select the automation that I'm going to be working on. And I'm going to be doing only track volume automation. Um, here's what happens. If you want to automate the track volume, you could click and manually do your automation lines. And that's totally fine. But let's say there's a, there's a gradual increment that you want to do. Uh, back in the day, you had to do it manually. Now, if you simply uh, select the area and then you right click, you can apply that gradual increment from a pretty fine automation shape like this one, for example. As you can see now, that's happening right there. You could have done it manually, but I just save you, you know, maybe three or four seconds. Um, now, that's that's one of those. However, you could do all kinds of things like this looks kind of like a sine wave. Um, there's uh, these two are very cool because you could use them as fade ins and fade outs when the song starts and when the song ends. Um, so just to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to go ahead and press um, play so you can listen to um, this automation happening. Okay. <laughs> So the level's going down. It keeps going down, you can see it here. It's going to get to zero, actually to minus infinity, sorry. And then back, and then back up. Sorry, that was a little long, but you get the idea. Now, um, our fifth feature zooming check this out you can now zoom all the way almost i wouldn't say to the sample to the actual sample but you know you can zoom pretty big so now it's easier to if you can zoom like that you could edit from your arrangement uh window it'll be easier for that that's very cool um also regarding uh zooming if you're on a laptop, um, if you have a certified Ableton laptop that has an actual trackpad that you can use, um, or an actual laptop mouse, um, you could zoom in using that. Okay. In my case, I'm using a desktop, so I can't I can't demonstrate that. Sorry. Let's go to our sixth new feature, and that's the fact that now we can freeze tracks that have um, that have automation applied to them. Sorry, that have uh, side chaining applied to them, and that's why I have this loop and kick track. Uh, my loop track has a compressor, as you can see here, and it has an active side chain from the kick. So if I press play from here, and I'm going to go ahead and re-enable my kick track. You'll be able to listen to the side, you know, side chain kick effect, right? Okay, there it is. It's not perfect, but there it is. Um, so if I want to render, or f sorry, not render, freeze the loop track, I can simply click on it. Oh, sorry, I need to go out of the automation. I can simply click on it. Right click and then freeze track. Back in the day, you were not able to do that because it had side chaining active. Now you can. Um, let's go to our seventh new feature included in Live 10.1, and that's regarding the export. So let's say you want to export what you have. If you go to File, Export Audio and Video, and you select all individual tracks, 
now you can include the return and master effects as your rendering options. This is new. Back in the day, you were not able to do that. So now if you try to render all individual tracks, you'll render the return and master effects too. That's very cool. And our last feature included in Live 10.1 has to do with, with VST3 plugins. If you go to your plugins list, now you have your VST3 plugins. So Live is now able to work with those. Um, so you can click on your VST3 folder and then select whatever you want and click and drag it and you should be able to use it. Now, if by some reason you don't see the VST3 folder here, you can go to preferences and go to plugins and make sure that you have your VST3 plugin custom folder option on and then you browse for it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see that. That was all for today, guys. I hope this was extremely helpful for you. If you have any other questions, please call us at Obedia at 615-933-6775. Bye-bye. Today's pro audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your pro audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.